Meanwhile, Britain is getting a new leader. Theresa May will officially replace Prime Minister David Cameron tomorrow. She was confirmed as the country's new leader after her last opponent dropped out. Cameron announced he would resign after Britain voted to leave the European Union. Elizabeth Palmer has more on the historic political shakeup. This morning, Theresa May saluted the cameras as she arrived at number 10 Downing Street for a meeting. But soon she'll be moving in, both to the House and the top job, taking over from Prime Minister David Cameron. We'll have a new Prime Minister in that building behind me uh, by Wednesday evening. Thank you very much. That new Prime Minister was surrounded by Conservative parliamentarians as she accepted the post. I am honoured and humbled to have been chosen by the Conservative Party to become its leader. Her biggest challenge will be managing Brexit, Britain's controversial departure from the European Union. Brexit means Brexit. But does it? Soon-to-be Prime Minister May voted against Brexit in the referendum, and there's speculation she may try to negotiate a compromise. Whatever her strategy, May's colleagues agree she'll be a steely negotiator. For the past six years, she's been the UK's Home Secretary, what Britons call the Interior Minister, in charge of policing, immigration and counter-terrorism. She's earned herself a reputation as a tough legislator, not charismatic maybe, but disciplined and good on detail. Thank you. Uh, Inevitably recalling Britain's last female Prime Minister, Margaret Thatcher, who left office in 1990, 26 years ago. And Elizabeth Palmer is tracking all the developments in London. Liz, there are some major questions over whether this process was democratic. Theresa May was the only person on the ballot following the aftermath of the Brexit vote. So what does that mean? Well, you might say she was the last woman left standing. There had been a vigorous and quite spectacular uh, competition following the, fa the, the fallout of Brexit for that top job. Um, and in the end, her only remaining opponent resigned several hours before, pulled herself out of the race. Another woman, incidentally, several hours before Theresa May was really named by acclamation. Um, in Britain, the leader of the majority party in the House is automatically the Prime Minister. So it has happened in the past, too, uh, that somebody has stepped into the job by virtue of leading the party, not by having taken the party to a general election, for example. And Liz, what are some of the biggest challenges and obstacles that are going to face Britain's new Prime Minister? Uh, well, first of all, I should say... Uh, it's, it's a good thing that we've got a new prime minister, we've got one fast, she has a reputation for being tough because we're going into very rough water. Um, the top, at the top of the list, of course, is Brexit, uh, this very controversial uh, move to take Britain out of the European Union. Uh, about half of the country voted in a referendum for it, half against. So. Whatever Theresa May does, uh, she's going to face stiff opposition from one side or the other. Uh, the, and, and, and it's going to require some real diplomatic skills. The other problem for her is that uh, the Europeans have said, right, Britain, if you're going, get out. We want to start uh, negotiations immediately. Theresa May wants to test the water. Uh, some of her critics say she may be tr looking for the fudge factor. At any rate, she's already said, look, we're not going to do anything until 2017. So um, it's going to be an interesting few months to watch. And it's been the most uh, astonishing, spectacular, brutal uh, weeks of politics uh, here in Britain, m more than anyone can remember for decades. Uh, Liz, before I let you go, uh, Theresa May will take the keys to 10 Downing Street after David Cameron has what is one of my favorite uh, moments in Parliament, the Prime Minister's questions. He gets one more. Is it going to be a sort of, you know, salute to him or is it going to be a shellacking, which is what I always love to see? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think it's going to be gracious and warm um, and, and, uh, and he'll get a chance to do a valedictory address. But I should tell you that um, in, uh, at Wimbledon over the weekend, the, at the men's uh, singles final match, he came with his mum, and um, uh, Andy Murray, the, who won the, the, the cup, pointed out that the British Prime Minister was in the audience, 
and a lot of people started booing. So oof. he's he's been having a rough time. Oof, oof. Stiff upper lip, though. That's what they always say there, <laughs> don't they, Liz? <laughs> they do. Thank you so much. Liz Palmer reporting for us in London.